Yeah, welcome back to DXB Today, where we continue our look at uh, all things urbanisation and getting a better understanding of it for us all. This inspired by the World Government Summit, which we concluded just a few hours ago. So joining us now to give us a better idea of well, what exactly urbanisation looks like, couldn't ask for a better guest for you. The founder and the chief architect at Arc Identity and the director of urban planning, Ahmed Bakash, joining us live here uh, on the show. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Thanks Thank for being with us. Thank you so much, Tom. Well, I suppose that's the question that we, you know, we've been throwing these terms around left, right and centre at the moment. Urbanisation, there's sustainability, that a lot of our viewers out there will just go, I don't really understand it. Can you sort of, can you give us an example? What does urbanisation look like for your everyday citizen of Dubai? Uh, that would be a pleasure because I think, as you said, there's a lot of terminologies floating around. However, the basics are very uh, essential and it's very important to understand these points, which is when you're talking about urban design for now, for this age, it's all about creating people-centric design. And what we need to do when we say people-centric design is look into our past because the way that the system and the cities were developed in the past in terms of setbacks, in terms of how the height ratio was between the narrow walkways and the heights of those buildings and how they created this natural shading effect, it has a more of a low-tech understanding. However, the high-tech can be adapted in order to complement that. So what we always say in terms of the basic principles of urban planning is that you need to get your basics right before you can apply these technological advancements into them. So let's say, for example, you're walking down a street. You would not be comfortable taking your bicycle down when you have a sidewalk exposed to road traffic to hear all the honking cars. So you need this kind of buffering. So it starts from the asphalt. It goes all the way up to the sidewalk where you have green spaces. You have that security measures. You can have movable bollards. You can have your cycle walk and then it moves on into the street frontage. Street frontage, you wouldn't want to walk around unless you have shade, you know. And nowadays we have challenges. Some areas have shade, some areas don't have shade. Mm. And it's very important to put that under a cohesive network when you integrate everything together and putting the person at the center of the equation. And I wanted to ask maybe what are some of the architectural trends that are out there that can help in the growth uh, that's happening here in Dubai? Well, our example through our experience. So it's very important to look at things in a reverse kind of methodology. So let's say, for example, when we designed the Expo Live Pavilion at Expo, a lot of people were focused on the building as an object mm -hmm. where you actually uh, wait till you have to go into the building to experience the exhibit. And what we did was we reversed that, ex that whole experience. So we said, while people are waiting in line, mm -hmm. they're under a natural shade. We brought part of that exhibition onto the arcade. While people are waiting in line, they're already integrated with that. So this kind of reverse methodology is e essential to make a successful urban design pattern, whether it is a trend, mm -hmm. but to make it timeless, that is the most essential part. Because whenever you go into some areas of the city, some you can say were done uh, more successfully than others or more practically. But whenever you go back to the origin of the city, how it grew out, that is a place that has both a tourism quality to it, it has the local centric uh, people residents living yes. around it, and it creates this beautiful migration between the expat community and the local community. Yes. So I always look at it not only as a trend, mm -hmm. but more of a timeless approach of a tried and true model. I had a question actually. Uh, if you had a magic wand and you could see one thing change from an urban uh, planning development perspective in Dubai, what would it be? If it was your wish, like you know, anything that could be done from one day to the next, time is not an issue, cost is not an issue, what would it be? What would it be? <laughs> wow. that's, not, that's not a small question at all. Very light. He's like, I'm just going to need a couple hours here. <laughs> I would say maybe take, because the major challenge is culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could produce the most beautiful, uh, down-to-earth, uh, pragmatic, practical design, but if people don't feel motivated to use it, uh, they would not utilize that, whether it has all the low-tech or the high-tech. So what I would do is forcefully, I think a lot of people would find challenges with that, maybe take a week out of your month, mm -hmm and take the car out of the equation mm, and wow. just see how you would react to that mm. and what 
ways would you walk around the city to get to where you need to be? So I think that is an important factor in changing the culture. Mm. Uh, I studied in Japan for three years, you know. Mm. I lost 20 kilos without even exercising. Uh, I was, on every day it was like an adventure. Mm. You see people walking down the street, people pe pe playing on violence, and uh, you can see the whole culture just by using a bicycle. Yeah. So I think that essential uh, transformation, it's more of a cultural transformation rather than more of a low-tech or a high-tech transformation. Now, having seen your work in person at Expo, just stunning, you have a very unique style and a very unique approach for everyone watching, you know, budding architects. What advice do you have for them uh, that would play well into the future of the UAE? What advice I would give is that architecture is not only about a building. I think there's a great transformation happening in terms of how a building affects the civic space around it. Mm -hmm. So I think being an architect, it's not only about that traditional mentality of I'm a star architect and whatever I draw on paper is uh, superb and beautiful. It's more of teamwork. Like even me, when I look at my team members and when I work with them, I look at every individual person complementing this design with their own, own thoughts. Mm -hmm. And what's important is to take into consideration is the end user. When we're developing all these new developments, it's very important, yes, there is a commercial aspect to it, yet it's very important to integrate that community that will be integrated within that community. So we were sometimes working in, uh, I was a part of a workshop earlier on in the year, uh, last year actually, and we had uh, an expat community and we had a local community and they were looking at local housing. And the main factor of that and the outcome of the workshop was that we all wanted to live together in a single community which had all the parameters in terms of urban design, greenery, open spaces. So that is a very, for me it was a eye-opening message where we really need to transform in the way that we think in terms of to create a truly um, a unique community which has capitalizing on the safety factor and taking it to that next level in terms of making it open to the public and uh, walkable all year round, not only in the six month of the nice weather, but the six month of the challenging weather as well. Wouldn't that be the dream? Yes. Oh my That's goodness, exactly absolutely. It. Well, Ahmed, thank you so much for joining us today and for Thanks. all the insight that you've been giving us. It's Dina, you've got DXB in 60 right I now. I do have DXB in 60. Now, for all of you familiar, you would know what this is. For those of you not, I'm going to use the next 60 seconds to get to know our Surprise. guest okay. co-host today. So I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions, Sonia, and right. you just answer to your best ability. All right. You're quite a fast talker. I feel like you're, I gonna, get, yeah, I feel like you're going to get through all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, um, let's cue the clock. Three, two, one, and go. Sonia, if you weren't in funding, what kind of job would you be doing? Uh, I'd probably be a ranger in uh, a wildlife conservation area in Africa. Oh, lovely. Well, your motto in life and in work? Um, nothing is impossible. What was that? Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Your first job, that was not impossible. My first <laughs> job was a, a counselor in a summer camp in the U.S. I taught sailing and tennis. <laughs> a superpower <laughs> that you wish you had? Uh, I wish I could read people's minds. Oh, not me. Uh, a top <laughs> tip for people pitching for funding? Um, Work on the relationship. Don't go in with the agenda that you think that, oh, Sonia's gonna invest that day. Like, get to know me. Let me get to know you as a founder as well. It takes time. It's a process. Yes. Okay, most used app on your phone? Oh, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. And just lastly, why Dubai? We gotta ask that question, guys. Oh, it's been here for 12 years, love it. My family moved to the region uh, 20 years ago and it's been home uh, for the last 12 years. And you're never leaving, right? Yeah, I've thought about it, but I don't really don't know where I would go, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I really have thought about it. Thanks so much, thank Sonia. You, thank you. Sonia, can't thank you enough for guest co-hosting today. Thank you for really having me. Really appreciate your time. Uh, congratulations with everything you achieved with Venture Suit thus far and thank all the best so for the future. And uh, Ahmed, thank you very much indeed. I know pleasure. it's a busy time for you, it's so can't pleasure. thank you enough for joining us to, uh, to lift the lid on all things urbanisation uh, and of course urban planning. Right, uh, we might be done with our guests but we ain't done with the giveaways. Do stay with us, prizes galore up next.